Hey everyone, it's uh, Maundy Thursday, so Thursday of Holy Week, and we're continuing our journey with Jesus through the Holy Week days as we get to see something that, what happened on each of those days, and so it's a joy to be here with you. Thursday is probably a famous day for most of you. You know what happened on Maundy Thursday. Most notably, Jesus gives us the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, just a wonderful gift, and we'll talk about that. But, but what happened on Thursday is... We don't know much, like in the morning or when this all took place, but uh, when they were preparing, remember Jesus, they needed to go prepare for the Lord's or for the Passover, excuse me. So he tells his disciples and he says, "Go find this upper room." And in the Gospels, we kind of get the big picture. He says, "This is exactly how it's going to be. You're going to go find this guy. You're going to say the Master needs it, and he's going to give you the upper room. And you're going to prepare the Lord's supper." And they find it just as Jesus had said. Kind of a neat, neat little thing, instilling trust in him even more. Then in, in John, which is different, we don't have the words of institution in John because John wrote his gospel much, much later. And so it's, um, you know he knows, the, the Christians know the story, so he tells us what Jesus taught on Maundy Thursday. So we have, in a large majority of John, we have Maundy Thursday, which is pretty cool to see Jesus' teachings. We see Jesus give them the new command, which is what the word Maundy is. It comes from the, the Latin mandate, which we get our word mandate, order, command. Jesus gave them this new command, which was to love one another as he had loved us. And he had demonstrated that love by washing their feet. He had demonstrated that love, or he would the next day, by dying for them. And so he gives us, this is the new command. This is what it means to be the follower of Christ, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love one another just as Christ had loved us and to love God. But then they're celebrating the Passover, which they had done for decades, right? You know, every good Jewish uh, person would celebrate the Passover, and it was an important day for them. It reminded them in the remembrance of their deliverance from Egypt, how God had rescued them from slavery, and they were to celebrate it in a specific way. And so it's kind of the shock then of what would have happened when Jesus kind of stopped. And he said, this is now new. And he takes the bread and he takes the wine and he says, this is my body. This is my blood poured out for you, given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Maybe shocked them, maybe stopped them, maybe caught their attention. And those words from Matthew 26, it's in Luke, it's in uh, Mark, it's in 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to read from Matthew just here shortly. There's no better sermon. And so whenever you hear those in church or you read those in scripture, think this is a, just an amazing sermon that uh, that Jesus gives to you, an amazing gospel message. Because he says this, this is these are the words we're focusing on. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the, of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. What beautiful message. Here we have Jesus' body and blood very sacrifice that would be winning and purchasing our forgiveness the next day on Good Friday on the cross. Here it is ours in the bread and the wine and it's for our forgiveness. It's forgiveness we can taste, forgiveness we can touch, forgiveness we can know we have as God wraps his arms around us in a huge hug and says, I love you. You are mine. You are forgiven. I think about this as well as I um, think of what was about to happen. How Jesus gave this great gift to his disciples when they were at about their worst. Um, think about it. Judas already had purchased Jesus for 30 sil pieces of silver, purchased Jesus' betrayal, right? And he's looking for an opportunity. He's going to do betray Jesus later that night and hand, them, hand him over to the guards. Then you also have Peter, who uh, is going to deny Jesus later, but before that, when when Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he takes Peter and James and John up with him and he says, watch with me, keep watch with me. They fall asleep, not once, not twice, but three different times. And then the rest of the disciples, when Jesus is being arrested, they all just scatter. They run away in fear. They are at their near worst. And yet Jesus gives them one of the best things. He gives them the Lord's Supper. He gives them forgiveness. He gives them this great gift where God brings his gift to us, where heaven and earth meet, and we here we partake of our Savior. 
sometimes we can look down at, at the disciples and we can wonder why did God do this? How could they not see it? But often we're like that too. And many times I'm sure we've, we've taken the Lord's Supper of God has come to us in word and sacrament when we have been at our near worst. But that's what God does. He's gracious and he's merciful. He forgives us our sins. And he comes to us with that big hug that says, I love you and you are mine. And so though at church tonight, as we watch it digitally, we might not be able to partake of the Lord's Supper, we still get to hear those words and hear that great message that this is for you and for me, for our forgiveness. And so we thank our God for this great gift of the Lord's Supper. We thank him for wrapping his arms around us and giving us eternal life and forgiveness. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, I give you thanks for giving us this great gift, uh, for reminding of me of it every time I read your word and hear those words, that this is for me, given and poured out for me, for my forgiveness, for the forgiveness of the world. Please be with us today as we worship separately, digitally, uh, apart from each other. But as we think about the Lord's Supper, as we think about how personal this is, that you gave us this personal gift for us, uh, and it was personal for you. Bless all those who are traveling, keep them safe, and keep all of us safe and healthy. In your name we pray. Amen. We will see you tomorrow.